Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback look at the LG BL40 dubbed as the New Chocolate. It was released back in 2009, and one of the reasons why we're taking a kind of retro look back is because of the aspect ratio of the display. It had a whopping 21 by 9 aspect ratio, so if you think about it, it was one of the first ultra stretched uh, aspect ratio phones on the market. And of course today, one of the current trends is 2 by 1 or 18 by 9 screens, some even giving us 19 by 9 with an extra notch on the top, so screens are are getting taller and taller just because you know people still want big displays for content consumption but they don't want to hold a super large device in their hands uh, and as a result we end up with this kind of stretched aspect ratio but uh, as a reminder kind of LG was one of the first manufacturers to implement that on a smartphone and it was many many years ago back then this seemed like a very strange design it reminded me of not only a chocolate bar as the name suggests but as a TV remote and this had a four inch panel but again it was extremely stretched it has a very vibrant IPS uh, screen as well that almost seems like it's AMOLED in terms of the contrast, which was also impressive, but it was a uh powered by a rather clumsy operating system slash UI that LG called S-Class back in its day. It was a proprietary system that they designed, uh, and it gave you a few smartphone functionalities such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and App Store, the ability to download Java programs, things like that, swipes and gestures, but it's definitely not as sleek or as responsive as an Android phone. You can tell the kind of lag and delay from all the transitions that they're trying to do here. But before we go too far into the software, let's uh, kind of go over the hardware of this device. The top has a front-facing camera for video chats and the bottom just has the LG logo so there were no physical home keys on the display which was also very futuristic for 2009 and on the side we have access to this chrome accent that runs through the micro uh, USB port for charging a multi-function key that you could program. There was a microphone along with these tiny little grooves, so it shows a lot of detail there. The other side had a dedicated camera shutter key, which was also nice, and a volume rocker, which is also very, very streamlined. So it was a time where LG, I think, put in a bit more thought into their designs and made their phones look quite luxurious. I say that because today it seems like Samsung has uh, exceeded LG in many ways in terms of crafting really sleek and futuristic looking phones, uh, especially with LG's you know, G5 that was definitely not a really attractive looking you know device very industrial looking where versus the bl40 uh here definitely seems like a fashion phone or a fashion product all right so turning the device back on and taking a look at this interface we did have a drag down notification shade on the top but you can definitely tell kind of the lag in the transitions there because the processor wasn't very powerful at all in fact LG never really released any specs, but we estimated that it would probably be around 600 to 800 megahertz, uh, definitely single core, so nowhere near the processing power that we have today. But we did have all the connectivity options on board, uh, and we had a nice array of uh, widgets as well that we could use to customize these panels with, including a clock widget, uh, we can set alarms with it, there's also a calendar widget, and there's also a calculator one, and a shortcut to things like games. Um, LG's S-Class interface did come with lots of uh, interesting games that took advantage of all the sensors on board that was pretty unique for the time. So for instance, if I wanted to try, let's say, Bubble Breeze, um, this one actually takes advantage of the microphone. So for instance, you can see how these bubbles are popping up and you have to hit on the stars to gain more points. Um, so a lot of these games not only taking advantage of the microphone, but also the accelerometer for motion sensing uh, and various other sensors on board. So that was kind of futuristic for the time. So if we exit out of this, and uh, take a look at some other features. Uh, there's also, in terms of the camera, a 5 megapixel sensor by Schneider Kruzek and a LED flash. Unfortunately, despite the uh, kind of optics and glass that is uh, branded by a pretty reputable name, the camera was one of the worst attributes of the BL40. It simply did not produce very sharp looking images, kind of a disappointment considering the optics that they're using. The phone on the back is made out of plastic, so it is a huge fingerprint magnet, even though it does look uh, very elegant. In the main menu, you can take a look at all the apps, and you can even use the accelerometer to rotate it and take a look at all of these programs at once, uh, whether it's entertainment, utilities, or settings, uh, but they're not labeled, so it's a little bit hard to guess at what their functions are until you play around with them. There's also this little cube icon that you could tap on and essentially brings up a 3D visualization of all the panels that you could more easily uh, kind of swipe between, but you can definitely tell the delay 
uh, you know, between the transitions, especially since the phone was kind of underpowered. Here is a browser panel that gives you shortcuts to the HTML powered browser. It does support multi-touch by the way, so uh, that was a plus. And since it does have Wi-Fi, web browsing actually was uh, one of the highlights on the BL40. It worked pretty well for its time. So here's a camera interface of the BL40. You can see it takes advantage of this stretched ratio by giving you more camera controls at a quick glimpse. Things like autofocus, flash settings, advanced settings for uh, changing the camera that's being used, resolution, and we have this carousel that uh, kind of tries to replicate what you'll find on a real point-and-shoot digital camera. So actually pretty neat in terms of interface design, even though the sensor itself isn't uh, you know, outstanding by any means but you can tap to focus and then capture an image and share it with friends and family. Because it has this ultra-wide aspect ratio, it was one of the first phones to implement split-screen multitasking. So you can actually open up resizable windows and have two apps running side-by-side -side split in two like this. So you can open, let's say, a calendar or an email on, on one side. On the other side, you could be, let's say, watching a video. So similar to what Android Nougat and Oreo offers today, but uh, implemented on LG's own proprietary OS many years ago. This is kind of the original uh, ad they displayed on the BL40 back in the day. And you can tell that the screen actually really isn't bad. It's an 800 by 480 panel, which doesn't seem like a lot, but you have to consider the relatively smallish dimensions. And then the PPI is actually pretty high. Colors are actually decent as well, showing you kind of their futuristic take on their UI at the time. Unfortunately, not quite as functional as they were touting, but definitely very unique. And here is that uh, kind of multitasking that they were showing, copy and paste features that were on board. The email client also took advantage of this uh, stretch screen by giving you panels on one side and then the message on the other. In addition, of course, there's a very large QWERTY keyboard if you want to use it in this view. So that's been our throwback look at the LG BL40 New Chocolate, part of the black design series of phones released by LG uh, almost a decade ago. LG was, again, one of the first manufacturers to play around with interesting aspect ratios, whether it's through super stretched displays or even in devices like the LG Optimus View, which was a phone that had a very square and boxy screen around the same era. So thanks for watching the throwback here at OS Reviews. This was a look back at the LG BL40 Chocolate smartphone.